When it comes to something like shotguns, there's many things you need to take into account, like what primer you like to use, what playstyle you prefer the most. Some people might say, you know, snipers are better shotguns, but necessarily that's not always the case. It also depends if you are a slug user or a pellet user. But at the end of the day, it's very hard to determine what you might find the best shotgun for your playstyle, and there might be one shotgun that someone uses that you might not like. You might either think it feels inconsistent, or you might either think that something else just feels better straight up. So what I've done, I've gone through several days of work to figure out what type of shotgun that, you know, is best for each and different playstyle. And we're gonna categorize these, and let's just start from the beginning. Okay, let's just say, if there's any specific shotgun frames you're interested in particular, um, just skip to this time step that you find interesting, and um, I'm gonna start off with slug shotguns. Okay, as you can see on the screen, this is every single slug in the game except for Chaperone, and the reason I didn't list Chapier is because I did exotics in a separate tab. But, I statted them all from, you know, different various of stats, from range, to handling, to aim assist, and the green ones are the ones with the highest you can possibly get on this type of shotgun. Blue is beyond what it's capable of getting without external exotics, and red is literally the worst it can get. So, most slugs can reach max range, but Heritage is the one with the most range, and the only way you can get that is with Offense Strike. And no reprieve in Sojourn's Tail has slightly further range, that's only with perks like Stats for All and Killing Wind. And the slugs with the best aim assist is actually very interesting, because it's four of them are Inquisitor and one of them are Bo Blasphemer. I set up the shotguns and, you know, the brawl I think is the best for each of them, and I'm gonna start off with Blasphemer, and it's also the one I think is the best. Now, I will say that I'm gonna mainly talk about consistency, so there's gonna be a lot of perks I'm not gonna talk about as much, which is gonna be damage perks. But remember, if you are a fan of damage perks, for sixes it's gonna be really good, but for threes it might not be. Something like Swashbuckler might be really good, because it will extend its damage buff past the 10 meters it can reach, and it will allow you to get much better time to kill and one-shot potentials to the body. But this is the best roll that I think is the most consistent in the game, which is going to be hipfire opening shot with 100 aim assist if you put on one targeting mod on your helmet. And then we have no reprieve. Now, this is an interesting roll because I'm not going with snapshot, I'm going with headstone. Now, the reason I'm going with headstone and specifically no reprieve, it's because if you are playing a stasis build, headstone is going to be really good. First of all, it allows you to get free cover without using something like a barricade. And when you're in stasis, you can put on fragments and aspects that will help you. Now, you have Whisper of Fissures, you have Whisper of Shards, Whisper of Chains, and Whisper of Rhyme. Now, if you break this thing, it will give you a, sh a little crystal that will give you an overshield with Rhyme, and... If you have Whisper of Chains, you will take reduced damage by standing close to the, the shard. And if you have Whisper of Shards on, Scattering will give you a grenade boost. Fissures will give you, will make it do more damage when you destroy it. So enemies close will take much more damage by you simply just destroying the crystal. And I think it's a really good combo with Stasis. That's the only reason I would even pick this thing up. Now, of course, I will keep talking about damage perks around it will be incredible if you can get it to proc, which will be three or more enemies. 220 to the body, which allows you to get really far one-shot kills past the range distance. Harmony is not really worth it unless you have damage perks like Radiant or Empowering Rift. 
First and last out, I'd say, is a different shotgun compared to Blasphemer, mainly because of its low aim assist value, but it has a slightly better handling. So overall, this thing is underneath, and I don't think it's really worth talking about. There's no real benefits for using a first and last out over a Blasphemer. And, of course, Ganora's Axe is just a better first and last out. It doesn't have a high of an aim assist value as something like Blasphemer, which is why I rate it lower. But what it allows you to do is use something like a kinetic weapon with it, which you can't with a Blasphemer. If you prefer energy primaries, then I would go with Blasphemer. If you prefer kinetic primaries, I would go with Ganora's Axe. And these are just to be consistent hip firing. And of course, Gnor's Axe have something called Ricochet Rounds, which allows you to shoot the wall and kill a person. And Skulking Wolf is really good because it will take you off radar. Now, Heritage has a perk called Offhand Strike. If you don't know what Offhand Strike does, it can allow you to get up to 12 meters of hip fire range. And on top of that, if you have a Luna Empowering Rift, it can kill up to 25 meters away from you hip firing which is really good but you have to be using a luna empowering rift after getting a kill so is it really worth it that's up to you to figure out if you like it then i would try it out play around with it but in my opinion i just don't think it's worth using over blasphemer now the difference is this thing is craftable and blasphemer is only farmable every three days so there's that Sojourn's Tail, I would say, is probably one of the best ADS shotguns in the game. I will rate it lower than the Inquisitor, though. But if you like Adrenaline Junkie and, you know, Frenzy with Radiant, then I would I would try this, this out. Frenzy with Radiant would allow you to one-shot body up to tier 5. Which is a little bit disappointing, but of course, there's many ways for you to get damage buffs. You can be running Lumina for up to tier 9 one shot and except for that that's really it it's a very good consistency wise because that's threat detector opening shell which will max its handling and range so i would play around with it if you can get your hands on it good luck farming there's of eternity though buddy then you have the inquisitor now the inquisitor stats looks a little bit juiced and i would only really use this in rumble or a low player pvp game mode the only way to proc alacrity is being last guardian standing and the only way to proc tunnel vision is getting a kill already. But if you proc tunnel vision, missing with this thing will basically be impossible. The aim assist value is crazy. And on top of that, it has golden tricorn. Which, if you don't know, is a 50% damage buff. So if you can get first a kill and then an ability kill, then this thing will be really dumb. Or of course, you can go back to Lumina and get the 98 body shot damage after one kill. But at that point, you should just go with Swashbuckler, honestly. Fortissimo has a lot of perks, and some of them are good, some of them are bad. You have a Daggio, which will one-shot body if you have Blessing of the Sky, and will kill up to tier 9 if you have Radiant. But if you do still go after consistency, get this over... Soldier's Tail, because this is a lot easier to farm for, but it's the same perks. Keep in mind, this is a kinetic, and Soldier's is an energy. Bone Chiller. I rate this pretty low on the list, mainly because it has Firmly Planted and Surplus, which is the only good PvP perks. And then, of course, it has Threat Sector Opening Shot, but in the same column. And then again, this would have been better than Soldier's if it had Threat Sector Opening Shot in separate columns, but it sadly it doesn't, so... If you want to use this, you have to use it with, you know, surplus, which will allow you to hold your abilities more than you would probably want most of the time. Nessus Ablation is a weird one, because the thing about Nessus Ablation is, of course, it has Paracausal Affinity, which will allow you to one-shot body with, again, Blessing of the Sky or something like Radiant. But then again, you need a kill to do so. So, for consistency-wise, I would go with Opening Shot and Dragonfly, but Dragonfly might be a little silly, you never know. Out of all of these, I would say that Blasphemer is the best one for consistency perks. Blasphemer has also a wide variety of options as Quick Draw, Hip Fire, and Threat Detector, and Opening Shot is just the best in the game. But best Hip Fire Slug is going to be Blasphemer. And best ADS slug is going to be between Sojourns or Inquisitor.
I was wondering if I was even gonna rank rapid fires because in general they are just really bad. And the only ones that was really noticeable is the Aikilo shotgun, which is also the shotgun with the most range of any paladin in the game. But the problem about it is still that you need to shoot twice to be able to kill someone. And that's the problem with all rapid fires in the game in general. They just don't one shot. Even if you are consistent, you have to be really, really close up to get a consistent one shot. If not, it's going to be a two shot every single time. But rapid fires can be used very easily as a cleanup shotgun. But in that case, I think a lightweight just outshines the rapid fire frame so much better. I'm only going to talk about the ones that is noticeable here, which is going to be the Aikilo shotgun, because it has the most range of any pellet in the game. And then I'm going to talk about threat level, because it has the highest handling of any shotgun in the game. I managed to get it all the way down to 0.06, and that was with the help of threat detector and field prep. Which is, you know, probably not the most optimal combo, because you have to crouch, but you get the animation scaler that you're after. And Aikilos, you get the most... Sp you get the furthest distance by getting a kill, and then you have offense strike proc'd. But the problem about it, especially with a rapid fire, they're going to be very inconsistent at that range because the pellets don't actually tighten. They just can travel further and do damage. So, you know, you're never going to get that one shot kill from 8 meters at all whatsoever. So, I'm just going to say here, these shotguns suck. Now, moving on to lightweight shotguns. Lightweights are probably some of the most loved frames in the game. And the reason for that is it gives you plus two mobility stat just by having it in your hands. So it's good for that. But on top of that, it used to be really consistent as a cleanup shotgun. Still is, but you know, quick swapping is no longer such a big thing. But you know, the one thing lightweights actually have to the name is really fast handling. And weapons like Swordbreaker has insane stats, thinking that you can get both 100 range and 100 handling just by having the gun is crazy. And there's a lot of lightweight shotguns I would actually recommend trying out if you're, you want to use one. One of them might be Xenoclass, another might be Wastelander. Even if you have it, Emperor's Courtesy, sadly it's, you know, it's no longer obtainable. Same with Motion to Vacate. It's a really good shotgun because it has slight opening, but sadly it doesn't reach max range like the other shotguns. And the shotguns that reach 7.05 meters are the ones with Killing Wind, as you can see here. Reese Walker is the only shotgun out of them that actually reaches that range with only Killing Wind. The other one needs slight shot to reach this far. The thing about these shotguns, something like Without Remorse used to feel like the most consistent shotgun in the game until they did the pellet spread changes, and I felt like Without Remorse just got neutered. And the reason for that is because I had Hipfire Fragile Focus, which was really good. Now, I think these are the only shotguns that's really worth talking about. Only these four. The other lightweights are kind of just mid or not worth picking up because of either it's too long of a grind or they're just not obtainable. And on top of that, these will outshine all of them. First of them is Swordbreaker. Swordbreaker Adept to be specific. And this is the best shotgun in the game for the lightweight frame. And it gets Threat Detector opening shot with 100 handling and 100 range. And it will give it a 0.17 ready speed which is really good compared to the other ones. So, Threat Detector gives you an animation scaler if you didn't know, and that's why I think this one will outshine the others, because it gets stats that the other ones just cannot do. You have Without Remorse. Without Remorse can get enhanced hipfire grip, enhanced fragile focus, or even if you want to, you can go elemental capacitor, which would be good if that's what you're after. You're going to lose some range, but if you play Arc, you will get 100 handling all the time. I would go with Fragile Focus, though, because of the extra range, and it's going to be more consistent while hip-firing with further distance. Now, this one gets a 0.28 ready speed, which is pretty bad compared to Swordbreaker, but at least you can hip-fire very consistently with this from far away, so it would be a good cleanup shotgun. Xeno class is actually the only non-craftable shotgun I'm going to talk about, and it's only because it gets Killing Wind slide shot. 
So the stats on this thing is 90, 71. And then if you get a kill, you proc killing wind, which is going to give you plus five mobility, which means if you just have this thing in your hands, you will get a plus seven mobility stat bonus. On top of that, it gets 100 range and 100 handling. And the range will surpass the actual fall off because of killing wind giving the increased fall off damage distance. And overall, this shotgun is going to feel amazing. But the problem is you need a kill for it. So just by that factor, I just wouldn't think this is worth it over without remorse and sword breaker. But then you have this one. The reason everyone loves this shotgun is because of Wastelander, Halo, whatever, whatever. Some people can't seem to grow out of the fact that Swordbreaker is just a better shotgun overall. Stat-wise and just in general, Swordbreaker is better. First of all, Swordbreaker is an adept weapon. And second of all, Swordbreaker just has better stats overall. If you look at handling, because that's the only stat that's worth comparing on these two, Swordbreaker gets slightly better handling. But if you can't seem to complete a Crota Master, I would go with Wastelander. Because, first of all, you have to get this on Master, or if you just don't do raids in general. Wastelander is a very easy shotgun to get your hands on, if you can do Dares of Eternity on Weeks Upon Ends. But both of these are kinetic, so Swordbreaker just outclasses Wastelander by a mile. And I think Xenoclast or Without Remorse are going to be the best energy lightweights in the game. This one you get from the weekly Exotic Mission Presage. And this one you get from just completing strikes and focusing it at Zavala. But I think all these shotguns I've talked about so far will get outclassed easily by these next shotguns. Next up on the list is gonna be exotics. And exotics were really hard to figure out because, you know, their stats are really inaccurate for what they actually are. Because their frames are different usually from, you know, their legendary counterparts. And... There is a lot of exotics here, like Tractor Ken, Legend of Accuracy, Lord of Wolves, Fourth Horseman, Chaperone, Duality, and Conditional Finality. I'll be talking all about them and explaining their exotic traits, and say what kind of place all they work better for. First on the list, we have Conditional Finality. Many people will say it's the best shotgun in the game currently because of the exotic perk, Paracausal Pellets. And I'm gonna say yes and no. I think this is the best shotgun for something like Trials. In every other game mode, I think there are other playstyles that's gonna benefit more compared to Conditional Finality. But the good thing about Conditional Finality has super good handling, but the lack of range. Luckily for Conditional Finality, Paracausal Pellets give up on that range because landing nearly all stasis pellets will freeze the target and landing nearly all solar pellets will ignite the target. So this is really good on either a solar or a stasis build but it works on every single subclass pretty well. It will one shot wells and bubbles and it's why it's so powerful instead of trials because it's zone based game mode and the supers that benefits the most from the zone based game modes are Ironically, Wells and Bubbles. Duality is a special shotgun because it's both a precision frame and a slug shotgun. If you hipfire with a shotgun, it will be like a precision frame. And if you ADS with a shotgun, it will be like a slug. And it has the best consistent hipfire range in the whole game. With the most range that any shotgun has hipfiring with 8.57 meters. The catalyst will give it an increase in range and getting a pellet kill will increase the precision damage on this shotgun on top of reload. Fourth Horseman allows you to have a really aggressive playstyle, but the only problem about it is the same as a rapid fire shotgun. You have to shoot more than one bullet usually to get the kill. Fourth Horseman can one shot people. It's just very inconsistent for its lack of range. It has 22 meters, which equivalents to 4.4 meters with damage fall off. And overall, the shotgun is really good for Antaeus where it slides and it will actually be very, very fun. Sadly though, it's just not that good compared to shotguns that can actually map you. Chaperon, I will say, I think this is the best slug in the game, but it is uh, an exotic, right? It has the perk called Roadborne, and upon kills, it will boost its handling and give it a scaler, and it will give it an extra meter once you get Roadborne procced from 11 to 12 meters. So it's a pretty good catalyst overall, and the aim assist cone will change very rapidly, which means it will be very easy to hit shots. On top of that, you get a you get an increase in fire rate. Roadburn is a very good perk. It has been nerfed though. It's not the 30 meter chappy we used to remember, but 
at the end of the day, it's the best ADS slug in the game. Lord of Wolves used to be top of the world for the longest time until Bungie nerfed it twice. And with the two nerfs, they changed up the way release the wolves works and without it. If you have released the wolves proc now, it will shoot in a circle-esque type beat and it will sadly be very inconsistent. If you want to get a kill with Lord of Wolves from one burst, you have to have three headshots and one body. It's an alright shotgun, but in this day and age, I just don't think it competes like other shotguns at all. Another shotgun worth mentioning is the the Titan Crusher, the Barricade Exploder, the Super Annihilator, Legend of Acrius. This thing will one-shot anything from ridiculous meters, and it's a very good shotgun, but of course it is a heavy at the end of the day. So if you want to sacrifice your heavy GL to be able to get a triple kill with Acrius, if they're all stacked instead of a bubble or stacked on top of each other, that's up to you. This thing is really, really good but it's really, really bad at the same time. Tractor Ken has the same faith as Legend of Acrius, and it's the fact that it's an exotic heavy. And this thing is really fun to play around with. It surprisingly has 6 meters for the 20 range it actually has. And this thing will be the suppressor, you know, the the super, the push them off the map weapon. It's a very fun gun to play around with, but it's not competitive in the slightest. If you're not running an exotic in your kinetic or energy slot, I would recommend to run Legend of Acris for tr or Tractor for the fun, not for anything else, but for fun. Overall, I think the only three shotguns that's worth mentioning from exotics are gonna be Conditional, Duality, and Chaperone. Chaperone is really good on controller, and I would definitely give this a try if you are a fan of slugs. And duality is very, very good for anyone, really. And it will probably be one of the most consistent shotguns in the game if you're not running an exotic kinetic. Conditional finality will be the bubble destroyer at the end of the day, and that's why people would use it. Have fun in trials, I guess. Okay, now we are over to the aggressive frame shotguns, and there is a lot of them, but there's a lot of them that stands out compared to others, and things that's a letdown is examples like Mindbender's Ambition, Comedian, Last Man Standing, you know, Balligant, all these, I'm not going to comment on the ones that sunset, because there's just no reason, they're not going to be used in trials, and they're not going to be able to, you know, be able to obtain. I mean, you might be able to have one of them, and like, shotguns like Python, it's just not worth even saying its name, even though I just did, right? But let's go over to the ones that's actually important and the ones I want to, you know, talk about. First of all, Found Verdict. Found Verdict is beloved for its special perk combo slide shot opening shot or slide shot surplus. And surplus allows it to go more into handling instead of range. So, you know, getting this, these good stats are pretty good. The only problem is you have to be able to have your abilities up all the time for it to be effective. And remember, Killing Wind will extend his range past 6.4 meters up to 7.5, but it's very inconsistent because of the bullet spread. It's a very important one to remember, and it's why it's not really worth it in the end of the day, even if it extends its damage falloff. Slide opening is the role I've always been after, and I'm currently 5,000 spoils in depth over it, and I still haven't gotten it. This is the most optimal role I would go with, and... I think this will feel amazing if I one day obtain it, but I have not. Sun Death has come on the same scale as Found Verdict. The only difference is you have to be playing Arc to make sure that this gun is effective. As Slide, Elemental Capacitor, which is probably the best combo for this weapon, you, you can of course go Threat Detector with Snapshot to make it feel really, really snappy. But Slide, Elemental Capacitor is the best combo on this for an Arc player. Felwinter's Lie is the go-to shotgun for new players. If you're new to the game and you want to get into shotgunning, this is the weapon to pick up. And the reason I say this is because it has some of the best perk combos on an aggressive frame shotgun. It has a tighter spread than other aggressive frames, and it will be more consistent if you know how to utilize it properly. Which is why I think Fall Winters is such a good shotgun. It can't get as far of maps as it used to be able to. 10 meters was a little bit ridiculous, but now that it's balanced and now that it's feeling good, I'd say this is a very good shotgun to run. If you can have your abilities up most of the time, this is probably the best aggressive shotgun in the game. And you sure, you can take this with a grain of salt, because you're gonna say, oh, Imperial Decree feels amazing, but I don't know. It's just something about Felwinter that makes it feel so consistent. The tight pellet spread and the fact that it has 
you know, really good perks makes it very good. The shotgun has really bad stats overall, and it the perks are kind of what makes up for it. It makes it really, really good and consistent. I wanna, I would try this even in the day or age we're in right now, if you are a fan of aggressive frame shotguns. Dead pen delivery had a special perk combo: slick draw, barrel constrictor. Barrel constrictor is not even worth thinking about. The change is is kind of meh. I don't think it's worth it in the end of the day. You need a kill for it, and I think you would benefit more from Killing Wind over Barrel Constrictor if that's what you're after. Slick Draw is good, but it makes the shotgun more inconsistent, so I wouldn't even pick it up. Because yeah, the aim assist value does matter on a shotgun. It will make great handling, but at the end of the day, it will just not be worth it. This is a really bad shotgun, and I just don't think it was a reason for Bungie to add it. Astral Horizon. I do think this is better than Imperial Decree for the reason of it having alacrity, but this will only be procced if you're last guarding standing or playing Rumble like I mentioned earlier with Inquisitor. So, is it worth it at the end of the day? Probably not, but it's probably the best aggressive kinetic shotgun in the game. I would pick it up and give it a go. It has a lot of variety and combinations of perks. As Threat Sector, as Slide Shot, as Killing Wind, if you like that, even Surplus, if you like Surplus a lot. As Opening Shot, Snapshot, Elemental Capacitor, if you want to run it on Arc, it will give it a lot of handling, and you can run Slide Shot on top of that for the increased in range. This is a very good style-wise shotgun, and I would give it a go. Hand in hand, hand in hand, I was kind of excited about when I saw the perk combinations on it, it has hipfire grip which is really rare on an aggressive frame shotgun the only other shotguns that has hipfire on an aggressive is last man standing and and the comedian but both of those are really bad overall so this is probably the most optimal role to go with you can even go with fragile focus if that's what you're into but slide shot honestly i think slide shot just beats it by a, such a big margin now here comes everyone's favorite shotgun imperial decree Imperial Decree, I wouldn't even pick this up if you don't even have the ornament, I'm not gonna lie to you. The way the shotgun is placed without an ornament is really weird. It's so low down on your screen, it's meant for a console reticle, which me on PC don't have. So it being so low on the ground makes it feel really weird and I just generally don't like it. But if you have the ornament, it's, it's the same model as Felwinter's Lie and I think it's a really good model. This thing has threat detector, slide shot and surplus. It has opening shot and snapshot if you like that. Me personally, I went with slide opening to begin with when I got this, but I think threat detector is a better perk overall because of the animation scaler, so it will feel really, really nice. But in the end of the day, I think the go-to shotgun will be found verdict. It has the best stats overall of any aggressive frame shotgun, and the reason found verdict is so much better is because it can make up for the insane range you get with slide opening for the good handling it has off base, something Astral Horizon cannot do. Even with max handling with slide opening on Astral, Found Verdict still has 10 more just with the base stats, which I think is really, really strong, and it makes this weapon so much better. What you could even do if you ran an aggressive frame, I would probably put on Ophidian Aspect. Ophidian Aspect gives you plus 35 handling, which is really strong, and then you can just put on an adept range mod and you will have basically max range and basically max handling. This is my go-to aggressive frame shotgun for a reason and I would try to get your hands on this if you have the chance. I'm gonna talk about probably the best pellets in the game by far and you're gonna see why very soon why. We have Matador Fract, Prophet of Doom, Retail Tail, Compass and Duskrock Blues. It's the only shotguns I'm gonna mention. I'm not gonna mention the blue and the green because I haven't done it with the others and this is the only sunset weapon I'm gonna mention because of how good it is. If you have if you have a Duskrock Blue, I would look for Threat Detector Snapshot. This looks to be a super strong roll and overall i would say this is a keeper because it reaches max range which is 6.7 meters and on top of that it has all right handling if you proc times two it's gonna have insane handling it's gonna have beautiful ads speed because of snapshot and it's gonna feel super consistent threat detector is definitely the best handling perk in the game because what i haven't said if an enemy is within 15 meters you will proc threat detector and it will tell you if you need to have your shotgun out or not. And it's basically a perk to, to let you know 
if it's time to go in monkey or not. And that's why I think Threat Detector is the best one. And on top of that, it has a ridiculous scaler if there's two enemies close to you. The, the handling will just be unbelievably dumb. So there's just no competition in any other handling perk. Retold Tail, I would go with Slide, Snapshot. I just don't think Quick Draw is that good anymore. If you really do want to, you can go Quick Draw. But Retold Tail just don't really have any range perks, sadly. Which I think is why you're gonna have to go Slide Shot. Prophet of Doom. Prophet of Doom is actually really good if you get slideways and opening shot. And slide shot procs for 3 seconds, which is really mid in my opinion. Slide shot keeps refreshing every time you slide, which I think is a lot better. And except for that, I think this is a very good shotgun to go for. And the fact that you need to remember is this thing will be craftable next season. If they give it threat opening like Matador, it's literally just going to be the best shotgun in the game. It's the only precision frame with enhanced threat detector enhanced opening shot and i just think that would be really dumb i think that's probably what's going to happen and we're going to see a power creep on shotguns in general because this will just be the best in the game fractifist i think this shotgun is really overrated the only combo to go on this is really opening shot quick draw everything else is not really worth for consistency this is going to be your best role but i just don't think it's worth going for whatsoever this might be good if you want to go with igneous hammer but at the same time you should just go with condition of finality if you want to pair this with iggy for example compass rose i think compass rose is a letdown it does have quick snap but at the end of the day quick draw is not really good at all whatsoever Sure, the handling looks really good, but the ADS speed will be really bad. And this thing was going to lack in range because it doesn't have any range perks, sadly. So just by that, I just don't think this thing is even worth going for, especially when we have something like Matador. Now, Matador is the power creep to all shotguns, pellet shotguns in this game. And it kind of just shows how strong a shotgun can really be. This thing has the best pellet in the game. Precision does have the most consistent, you know, one shot. On top of that, it has opening shot with threat detector. Threat detector gives you incredible stats whenever you have two enemies close to you. And it's almost maxed by that if, when you have one person close to you. Threat detector will always be active in a fight. So you don't need to worry about not having enough handling to quick swap to your shotgun. It will have 0.2 with 0.22 ADS. You will have 0.15 and 0.18 handling. Which is going to be really, really good. Range, it, re it reaches max range with, without like a damage buff or damage scaler. So I would 100% just say Matador is the best shotgun in the game. There I said it. I said the only question people was wondering about. After 40 minutes or 30 minutes of you guys watching this or you know you skip to the end. Matador is the best. Though I would still look out for Matador. Conditional Finality, Found Verdict, Dust Rock Blues if you have it, even Swordbreaker if you're after a lightweight shotgun, and, you know, a Blasphemer, Heritage, Chaperone, Duality, all of these shotguns, Foul Winter's Lie, these shotguns are all shotguns I would recommend picking up and try out and play around with, but at the end of the day, you find out what perks you enjoy the most on shotguns. I'm not going to sit here and tell you you have to use this and that, but these perks are kind of just the best in slot on all these shotguns from, you know, thousands of hours of gameplay. This video kind of took a week for me to make, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. And now enjoy the outro of, you know, shotgun madness. And I'll see you guys around. <laughs>
so it has gone. No, no, no!